are having quite the late start in Rome. Marsh had kind of a headache this morning and we were just feeling so just like major travel fatigue. Um, I know that sounds silly, especially if you just go on like vacations and travel, but when you are traveling full time, this is our fourth week of traveling, sometimes you're just like, whoo, I'm exhausted just from the go, go, go. But we we're about to do basically the thing we're most excited to do in Rome, and that is go see the Colosseum and maybe the Capuchin Crypt. Come on. Okay, this is gonna sound a little pessimistic as well, but I absolutely hate all of like the side shows walking around this beautiful ancient place and like you just got some dude like beatboxing and like another cat who's just like a fake statue. It's just like, come on man, are we like in an ancient cool place or are we in Disneyland? Like what are we doing here? Lose all the side shows, you don't need it, this is Rome, you know? He's very negative today, and at first I was just like, okay, okay, and now I'm trying to be like, <laughs> Hey, I'm just speaking my opinion. Just speaking my honest opinion. Okay, there is the Coliseum right behind us. So I just wanted to come on here and say something. I think it, when you travel, there's a lot of pressure to do what you're supposed to do and see all the things you're supposed to see, like the Colosseum or like the Eiffel Tower in Paris or something like that, but you don't have to. Like just because you don't see those things because you don't want to doesn't mean that your experience is any less than anyone else's. What matters is that you're having a good time and doing what you want to. I'm with her, 100%. I don't know, sometimes I just feel like there's like this huge pressure to see some of these things and I'm just like, I don't know if I want to see it. Okay, so another thing I wanted to say, we're in the sh literally in the shadow of the Colosseum now. Sometimes like you can go see a big monument and you don't need to see it from where everybody sees it either. So there's a fraction of the people here, but you still get to see the Coliseum. It's still pretty cool. But like you just walk just a little bit around the Coliseum, way less people, you still get to see it. So that's kind of what I suggest. Don't just see everything from where everybody else is seeing it. If you just venture off a little bit, a lot of times there's, a le there's less people. It's not as iconic of a shot probably, but you still get to see it and there's just less people, less stress. So that's what I like to do. Think outside the box when you're traveling. That's kind of like what we're trying to say. A lot of times you miss really cool things because it's not what you're supposed to do. And this, all of Rome has just felt like one big, like this is what you're supposed to do. And we just don't really like to travel like that, honestly. So, but but it's cool. I'm a big fan of sports. So the Coliseum is very cool to me now that we're up next to it, but the crowds are just like crazy out front. So circle around back, then check it out. really cool. They used to sponge up the gladiator's blood because they thought it cured epilepsy and so then they would like sell it off. I thought that was a little bit interesting, a little gruesome but interesting. Yeah, it's uh it's been a little smaller than I expected to be honest. Like when we first walked in, I it's almost like how the Grand Canyon is where you expect it to be just like enormous like and obviously they are enormous, but you, sometimes you hear it so hyped up, you see the movies, you hear about it, and then when you finally see it, you're like, oh wow, it's smaller than I thought it was gonna be. But it's still huge, I mean, it's still such a feat. I can't believe how similar it is to modern stadiums. Like, this was the first stadium and they just nailed it, like the first try. So I think it's so cool how it's set up. The modern stadiums are almost identical to how they're laid out. I think that's super yeah. cool. This place held about 50,000 people. That's almost like our football, our football stadium back home. Yeah, it was saying in the 1500s that people actually came in and started studying it because by that point it was basically just even like old ruins then to them. And uh, they started just like taking down measurements and things like that for modern stadiums today. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, obviously, you know, something you got to do when you when you come to Rome, but... Just expect to fight lots of other tourists because everyone wants to see it. That whole area down there is where they held the gladiators and the animals before the fight. It's like an entire little village down there. It was just 
under the floor like that. There you can get a good look kind of down in there. That brings us and the Coliseum to a conclusion. That was a good round of games. Saw a couple of beheadings, you know, a couple of tigers went down. It was great, man. Those gladiators, they fought super hard. So I really wanted to go to the crypts here. And I was looking up and the capuchin crypts are like the most famous one where the capuchin monks were buried. And it's like a 20 minute walk from here. It's only eight euro to get in per person. So I think we might try. We're walking away from the Coliseum. The Coliseum's like right back there. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's this immense chanting, so we came to check it out, see what's going on. Decent sized uh, war demonstration about the war going on in Ukraine right now. Pretty awesome show of support for, uh, you know, Ukraine. All right, we are here at the Crips. Entrance is up in that building. The Capuchin Crypts are the final resting place for 4,000 Capuchin monks. Their bones adorn several alcoves within the crypts themselves. As if this wasn't spooky enough, a plaque reads, What you are now, we once were. What we are now, you shall be. To respect those that are buried here, filming is not allowed, so you'll have to come see for yourself. Okay, we, we just finished. Just came out. There was no filming whatsoever. Right, whatsoever. They were super strict, so we didn't yeah. get much at all. We felt kind of like we would have felt conflicted about filming people's resting places anyway, so we probably wouldn't have. But it was really cool. It's definitely like an off the beaten track, like unique thing to do if you're in Rome. It was 16, no, it was 17 euro though. I think that's a little stiff priced. Yeah. Um, I thought the crypts would be like underground and more like spooky yeah. instead of just being like a building. I thought they were gonna be more like the catacombs in Paris. Mm -hmm. They weren't really like that at all. But I thought we were gonna go like underground and see some like ancient tunnels with like mm -hmm. bones and yeah. it's not that. So it's, no. it's more like a museum. If you're interested in like Capuchin Order of Monks or anything like that, just the Capuchin Order in general, definitely come because you will be fascinated. But it was pretty cool. Maybe a little overpriced, but if you're into that stuff, come see it. Just realized on our walk home, we're actually going to pass right by the Trevi Fountain. It's another little landmark checked off. You're supposed to toss a coin into the fountain over your shoulder and not look. You can't look and make a wish. Okay, so I got my coin. We're gonna put a little American penny in the, in the fountain. Don't look, no, we can't look. Everybody's been looking, you ready? Okay, ready? Here's the coin. Wait, you're gonna pick on my wish. Uh, ready? Yep. Set, go. Hi, wish. Hi, wish. So I'm gonna give you direct reality versus like what you see on video. Here is what everybody thinks you see. Here is what you actually see. We're gonna whack somebody in the head. So when you come, if you want a clean picture, expect to wait about a ra any range from like five to fifteen minutes just to get a picture with like no people in it. So something to be aware of. But that fountain is super beautiful, no doubt. Okay, as you can see, we're back at our Airbnb. We just decided, you know what? Let's go to Care For, which is like the little grocery store here. Let's just get some basically like picnic supplies like bread, like prosciutto, cheese, wine, very important at this moment. And we also got some pasta, really cheap because we're hoping there's a pot here to maybe make some pasta. But yeah, we just totally audibled. Not super interesting for the vlog, but it is what it is, guys. Rome, whoo, she has not lived up to our expectations yet. She's got tomorrow to make it up to us. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.